Hello, welcome, come on in. Have a seat, I'll get the tea. Okay, have you settled, you got your cup of tea? Okay, good, because my name is Anne and this is a Toby Nitz podcast, episode 152. Welcome, welcome everybody. I have got so many new subscribers, which I'm thrilled to bits about. I'm so glad you're all came in over to have a look and stayed. Anyway, I'm super glad you're here. And of course, all my regulars know what to do. We get our cup of tea, we get comfy because we're gonna be talking about the knitting, the crochet, the cross stitch, and the quilting. Ah! Yeah, there's lots going on today, lots. So. It's been two weeks since we last had a chat. What have you been up to? I've had a great two weeks. Um, I have notes because, you know, it's been a while. So we went for a fabulous brunch just at the start of the new year with Andrew, my eldest son who lives in the next village over. Um, oh, I live in Canada, by the way. Did I tell you that before? Yeah. Hmm. I am actually British, but I live in Canada now and have done for 40 odd years. So this is my Canadian accent. Well, I call it my Canadian accent. Um, <clears throat> and so I live in this little tiny village just outside of Ottawa, Ontario. We have a ton of snow. We got dumped on about two days ago. It's a lot of snow. And it's been very cold, which means the snow's not going to go away. Yeah, it doesn't melt like it does in England after a couple of days or out in the Nova Scotia area, you know, because they get lots of rain and then it melts. Uh, here, no, it just gets really, really, really cold and silly cold. And we'll be like this now um, until March. <laughs> How exciting is that? Not. Um, so anyway, yeah, so we went out for brunch with Andrew, my eldest son that lives in the next town over and his wife and the two kids, Tristan and Evie. And we had a fabulous time, actually. They're so good in the restaurants now because Evie's only like 18 months old. Tristan's nearly four. And um, they're really good in restaurants to take out. They're fun. Check this out. Cheese! Cheese! Did you send it? Cheese! So yeah, that's me and Ev messing about. So that was fun. And then just this past weekend, we took Tristan, Bob and I, and Andrew took Tristan to the movies. Well, I haven't been to the movies in, we were actually trying to work it out. We think we went to see a movie called Gravity. We think that was the last time we went to the movies. And we had to put them funny little glasses on, like 3D things, we think. So, I mean, that's how long ago it was. It was just like ridiculous. So it was kind of fun that our first trip back to the movie theater was to see trolls <laughs> with Tristan. <laughs> um, he was so good. He sat through the whole movie. He didn't really get, you know, antsy or anything because we did have a giant bag of popcorn. And we had Smarties and we had gummy bears and we had this really ridiculous drink. I had water, but it was a lot of fun. And Justin Timberlake was in this movie. He was the lead character or main character. <clears throat> and so there was lots of songs and, you know, so Tristan and I are doing this in our seat when they were singing. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. So uh, what else have I been? Oh, I started a newsletter. The newsletter will be weekly and it will give you news basically on what's happening, whether there's a new podcast, i.e. this one if there's gonna be a live, if there's a shop update, that kind of thing. And I've started blogging again. And the blog is a little bit more, 
what I've been up to since you last saw me, what have I been working on, what have we been up to with the kids, kind of more fun, you know. Anyway, the blog you can find at, it's really more like a website, it's at www.tobynets.com. And when you go into the blog post, uh, it will automatically flip up the newsletter sign up. And if you sign up for the newsletter, you will get my PDF for whips. Yes. And let me tell you, I have been having so much fun doing this Gideon method. It's really helping me get the whips down and I'll tell you all about it now. So this is the sheet that you'll get, which tells you all about how it works. Then you get this sheet, which has got all of the knitting things that we are doing. So what you do, first of all, is you sit down and you write out everything that you've got whip wise. I did not realize I had that many blankets. I was kind of embarrassed, but a bunch of them are blankets that like live through the year, like the mitered square blanket. <gasps> I'm a bit obsessed with that right now. I'll have to tell you more about that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so after you've done this, you then decide which projects. So you pick six, you could pick five, you could pick three, you could pick whatever you want. But I picked six projects. I wrote them down. I decided how many hours I'm going to work on each project. And then this just tells you how it works. So basically, I took the first one, which was the mermaid shell socks. And these I had started last year I feel like they were the June or July socks I feel like they were the July socks I feel like they were and I was doing um Helen Stewart's curious handmade sock society or something I always call it the secret sock society I have no idea why but I do um and this was her sock, The Mermaid Tail. And I dyed up, because if you remember last year, I was dyeing yarn each month based on a flower. And this is Asta, the Asta, which is a beautiful, beautiful flower. Anyway, this was the sock, but I'd only made one. And I got second sock syndrome. It's a thing, people. It's a thing. So um, I put it away, forgot all about it. So this year, after I'd found the sock bag, I decided to cast on the second one. And um, I do have a couple of the skeins of this yarn left in the shop, by the way. I have more information on the shop as well in a little bit. So um, I decided this would be the first of my Gideon method. And so for 12 hours, I worked on this. And what I did, oh, I can't show you, my phone's up here. What I did was I opened up, do you know if you have an Apple phone? I don't know if it has the same thing in the other type. Um, you have a thing called notes. So I opened up a note because I always have my phone right beside me anyway. Um, so I used that and I typed, set a new note up called the Gideon Method. Number one, mermaid socks. Then I went and put the day that I did them. And then I went to my stopwatch in my clocks and set the stopwatch to just go off. And I would just sit and knit. And then when I'd finished knitting for the evening, because I only usually knit in the evenings, I would turn it off and then just add the time in. So this, I cast it on, got through all this. Now, once you get through this loveliness here, which is a really interesting pattern to follow, um, the rest of the sock is now plain, other than you have this little bit of stitch work on both sides going, goes all down the sock. Um, so I'm through the gusset, 
and I am now ready to, I think actually I have two more rows of the gusset. Let's see, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, so I have four more, sorry, rows of gusset before I can flip my needles back. This is how I like to do a magic loop my gusset. I don't like having all the picked up stitches, the heel and the picked up stitches on one needle and the front piece, the work piece on the other. I don't like doing that. So I split it so that I have both of my um, stitches on each needle the same. So basically I split the front and then I split at the heel. If you want me to show you a video of how I do that, let me know below and I'll be quite happy to do a video for you of how I do that on Magic Loop. Um, so yeah, so this was 12 hours. This got me 12 hours of work. So what you do after you've done the 12 hours on this, it's not finished. So it goes to the bottom of the pile and the second one comes up. And the second one that I worked on was the little mini crochet doll. Now, <clears throat> somewhere, did I put it here? Where did I put it? I had the instructions so I could tell you more about it. Oh, here it is. So this was the doll. This was the pattern. And I think I just got this on Etsy. I feel like I did. Um, it was when I had decided I wanted to start doing amigurumis. Amy, Amy McGroomy. Kath, help. Amigroomies. Amy yeah. Um, so I wanted to do some crochet tiny little dolls. So this was a keychain. So I thought this is going to be quite small. And um, she's obviously, I don't know if she's Russian or whatever, but and it's in English, the pattern, which it, it's it's not too bad to follow. But you can tell it's not, you know. Anyway, um, I had done the doll, but I had not done the hat or the dress. So that's why she was in the rotation to do. Look! Is she not the cutest? Of course, she looks really big to me to be a keychain. But, you know, maybe that, maybe that, I mean, look at those keys. Maybe they're big keys. Mm. Now, the hook size was very tiny. Like, I'm talking really tiny. And um, it was like a, a 0 .06, 0 0.06 or something. Like, it barely had a hook. And uh, so, for the dress... And the hat, I went up a needle, a hook size, because I was finding it hard. And the yarn that I used was the Crochet Cotton, Miss Lydia's Crochet Cotton. So that's what I used to make her with. And her hair, I think I might give her to Evie, or I might just keep her, <laughs> because she's just so cute. I'll see if Evie notices her and starts wanting to play with her when she comes over. But, oh man, I love her. So she's done. So she gets hoofed out. So what I did was in her place, I have put the Dorothy Mouse, which is a knitted Emma McGroomy. Emma, Emma Groomy, Emma Groomy. So that's why it says here, the doll is crossed out because she's finished. And Dorothy so basically they go back to the bottom so the next thing on the list was my favorite blanket now I am totally in love with this my favorite blanket. so what this is is last year Kay Jones of the bakery bears started this thing where she would show us how to dye yarn our own yarn in the kitchen although I do it in the basement with a pot and water and all that. And it's free, you can go on to her uh, Bakery Bears. It's not part of her Patreon thing. 
and she would dye up some yarn based on the color of a flower and um and then there were two you had to dye two colors a tonal and a speckled and she'd show you how to do them and then you would hold them double it's fingering weight you'd hold them double and you would knit it into a blanket so I kept up really well until June and by the time June showed up um, it was too hot to make this because the yarn that I had picked I got it from knit picks in the States and it's called um, bear hair so I'm not sure what the percentage is of it. Um, I don't know if it's, I actually don't know what it is, to be honest with you. I'll have to look it up. Maybe I'll, bare hair, it sounds like a rabbit to me. I, I don't know, I'll have to check it out and I'll leave it on the screen or I'll um, put it in the notes below. So we started out doing a triangle. So this is where it was. And so I want you to pay attention to this. <laughs> That's bossy. No, I want you to just notice because I'm going to show you something in a minute. Um, that will make this make this will make sense. So here are the two colors held together. And we did this and it's a triangle. And then we added, so that was the January colorway, which pff, I have no idea what they are, forget. Then we added this, these two colors. Then we added this one, that was March's colors. <clears throat> and it's all just garter stitch. Then we added these two colors. Again, these are two held together, a speckled and a <clears throat> tonal. Then we went to this color and we started adding a design and we are now only decreasing at one side because we're going straight up because it's going to be an oblong blanket. So it's kind of like a corner to corner, but knitted. And then I just, so that was January, February, March, April, May. This was June. So this is where I was. I had just started one row of this color and just to let you know so let me see there was the tonal it's very like this color here there was this one which had a little bit of brown in it and stuff and there was the speckled so they were held together to come up with this colorway and again we have these in so I spent, actually wasn't even 12 hours working this because you have to do so many rows um, of this, which is what I have done. Um, and I just love it. I absolutely love this. And it's squishy and lovely and it's really hard to show it all isn't that pretty so um the next colors that will go with this i dyed up yesterday so i dyed up the july colors i am so in love with these colors oh my gosh look at that so this was the speckled now i didn't have all the color dye she uses. So I just use what I had on hand. And so that's three colors in there. Oh, it's just so cute. I am in love with this colorway. And this is just the tonal. Isn't that so beautiful and delicate? I might even just dye some of this and put it in the shop. Because, ah, oh, so these two will be held double and knit into there. So that'll be the next color. <gasps> but of course that won't be till I reach that cycle again. 
Now, <clears throat> because this did not take me 12 hours and to do this part, all the green and blue, um, and because I hadn't dyed up the next color so I can just start the next color, um, what I did, so warm, what I had, Kay had suggested that we do um, with the leftover because this is how much is left over from the 50 grams because the balls that I, I dyed, these balls here, are 50 grams each. So um, what, I, look at the fluff on that, look at that. So these were the, these two colors were these two here. I love that. I love both of these. I think this is my favorite so far. Um, and these are the other two because these are all left over and there's at least 30 grams here, 25, 30 grams. So what she had suggested was to make a mitered square pillow cushion, I should say, to go with our blanket. But instead of holding them together, put them singular. So I did. And I have to tell you a really funny story. So here it is so far. So this is gonna be the width of my pillow. And then I'm just gonna keep adding six, you know, all the way down here because there will, there's, there'll be 12, I think. No, there'll be 24 because there's 12 colors, 12 stripes held double, like two colors. So yeah, that's 24. So um, that's what I'm going to do. So there was the January color. That was the, the speckled. And that was the, the tonal. So that's what I mean when I said look. Because that's what these two were. Look how different they look when you hold them double. And then this, which I loved, has purples and blues and reds. And this one, we held these two together and we got that. I mean, is that no craziness? And this was, um, this we had to do one half of the skein in this orange color and the other half in the gold color. So I was learn I've been learning how to do all this stuff, which is great, right? Then the third month, which was this one, was this gorgeous purpley color and blue. And then this, which again was three colors that we dipped three different times in the pot. So they look so different. And so this one, these were the two that I did, um, which are this color. So these were this color. And these two I got finished in the 12 hours of this. So I worked on this for, I feel like this might have been eight hours that I got this done. Oh, I'm losing my stitches and my needle here. Wait. No, there it is. It's all on my lap. So I got this done, I think, in eight hours or so. And then I did these two. And it was so funny because I have got at least two more Midas Square projects. Let me put it that way because they're not anything at the minute. They're not a blanket, they're not a pillow or a cushion. They're not a nothing. Um, and I um, start them because I love them and then I get bored of them and I put them away or I forget about them. So I've decided <clears throat> um, that I want to keep working on my mitered squares and maybe I'll do a scrappy scrappy Saturday or no sweater Saturday scrappy Sunday where I will work on the scrappy bits and I think we maybe we should have a knit along what do you think 
Who else loves to work on mitered squares with all their leftover? And who would like to join me in a make along? So I just love the, but here's the funny story. So I went to, to make it and I got the first one done fine. When I went to add the second one, it wasn't working out. My my little thing was was going the wrong way and I could not figure it out. And I sat there and I sat and I went back and looked at everybody else's. I looked, I pulled out the old one I did and I'm like, how can I forget how to do a mitre square? How is this not working out? Um, and I, what I'd realized was I'd actually put this on the wrong side. Um, now it's making sense because now I will join here and here and then the stripe will go that way or the little thing in the middle. So this is what one side looks like. And I do my mitered squares different, I think, to everybody else. Everybody else is doing the Kemper, Kemper way or something. I don't know. Crazy Sock Lady does it all the time. And okay. And a couple of other people. I don't do my mitered squares like they do. I basically just do a double D piece in the middle. So here's the one side and it's flat. It's not all raised and bumpy. And then on the other side, it looks like this which to me look like horse's hooves. And how I do mine is I, I always cast on 49 stitches because three are my middle ones and then the other side is 23, 23. That's how I do it. And it gives you this nice stitch, this size. Let me see if I can figure out how big this is. I feel like it's, it's three inches by three inches. So what I do is I then will knit um, to the 23 and I'm then I'm to the three. I slip one, knit two together, and I pass a slip stitch over. And that's all I do. I don't put a stitch marker in because I read my yarn. So I can see when I'm coming up to this the middle stitch and so one stitch before the middle stitch is where I slip it knit two together pass a slip stitch over keep knitting and the second side is just plain knit so that's how I do mine if you want me to do a tutorial and how I do it to actually show you let me know and um and I will <laughs> and so anyway this I'm just in, in love I I once I figure out what I was doing, because honest to God, I think it was over a year ago that I even did a mitered square. It's such a long time ago. And um, now I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. So I have these two to go in next. And here's the next fun part. So it's like, do I want the purple one there? Or do I want the green one? So that's the, I feel like I'm going to do the purple one here and then the green one. And then I'll have these two. So I'll probably do the green one here and then this one. Anyway, I am just loving doing my mitered square blanket. And next time, they're all falling apart here. Next time, I'm just going to dump them on the floor. It's easier. I will um, pull out all my other two mitered square blanket projects. Um, and we'll have a little think about that. So, oh, there's a car going very slowly outside. There must be something coming through the bridge. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a big wide load, look. Oh, there's two big things. Oh, wait, there's three. I wonder what they are. Anyway, I hope you saw that. I have no idea if you did or not. Um, so I have a railway bridge. You just can't see it. It's just there. And the road goes very narrow because it's going under this railway bridge, which has active trains on it. We always get trains coming by. And um, I don't even hear them anymore because 
they come by that often. But um, when a big truck comes through, everybody else has to wait because you know it's a bit skinny of a of an area. So I'm digressing. So so that was the twelve hours done of my favorite blanket. So I got my color done, uh, finished off for June, and I got two mitered squares done. So that's brilliant. So the next thing on the list. Uh, is the Pemberton pullover, which is Bob's pullover, which I have not worked on. Okay, let me even look and see when I started this pullover. Let me look in my Ravelry account. One moment, please. When did I start this for poor Bob? I think I started this. Oh, is it even in here? Wait, it's gotta be in here. Where's Bob's pullover? Oh no, I can't find it. Gotta be in here. Maybe it's at the bottom. Poor Bob. There it is. I had it hibernating. I better fix that right now. It's no longer hibernating. We are now currently, no, we're not finished. We are in progress now. Save changes. So I started this April 16th, 2021. And um, I feel like it got put away. I did the back. <clears throat> Here's a picture of the Pemberton pullover. And the yarn I am using is Touch of Alpaca by Lion Brand in the color Olive. Because I wanted him to match this. And I'll tell you about this in a minute because I have had lots of comments about this. So that was the yarn I'm using. I had knit the back and I forget what size needles it, it is. So here is the back. So it's very plain at the bottom. You, it's, and it's a long time since I've done a pieced knitting. So um, you start at the bottom and work that. And then you get into these gorgeous. And I, it really is super interesting. Because you've got all these different, really nice designs so it kept you busy it kept you going so that's the back done and I had started the front and I had got as far as the stitch marker and that's as far as I had got so I picked this up on ah, last night was when I started my 12 hours for this and that was two hours of work from the stitch marker to there. So yeah, I'm so happy. It's, I'm back to it. And um, the needles, I don't think they have a, oh, they do. They are 4.5. I think the cuff or the rib was a four and then you change and go to the 4.5. And so um, I just think they're um, Michael's needles, I don't know. So that's, uh, yeah, they are. What was the other one here? Oh, they are Michael's. Oh yeah, they're definitely Michael's. Oh uh, yeah, four millimeter was the other one. So um, a very enjoyable knit um, It's a, at the moment, cause it's just, you know, plain. And you're actually just repeating or copying the front the back until you get a bit higher up to the neckline and then um, then it will change a little bit because you have to do a lower neckline than you do at the back um so yeah i've really really been enjoying my gideon method it's really helping me to get a lot accomplished or at least I'm feeling accomplished. I'm feeling like I'm moving my projects forward. 
Some of them I'm finishing. I should have, when I get rotate back to the sock, I should get that finished in those 12 hours. So it's just really fun. And then, so after I've done my 12 hours of this, so at the moment it's only two, and then I'll be on the Geo Gradient Shawl and the Starlight Blanket. Those are the six that I picked. Now, it's also fun to do it for other things like my quilting and my cross stitch, which I'll show you about in a minute. But I, before I get off the knitting, um, oh, and my mitered squares, by the way, I do them on a 2.75 DPN. And I just stick, my friend bought me those, uh, Daniel. I just stick uh, a little stopper on the end. And that's what I use for my DPNs, um, for my mitered squares. So this is called the Skagafal Sweater by Diana Waller. And I made this, I started it September 2020 and I finished it March 2021. And I'll stand up, it's very plain at the bottom. There's nothing on the bottom or on the sleeves. It's a beautiful fit. I really love it. And the yarn was the Barreco Ultra Alpaca in Pete, um, which is this one, the main color. This was Pea Soup mix, and this is Winter White. But I will put a link below to my uh, Ravelry notes so you'll be able to see. But I really enjoyed it. It was a kit that I got from Galt House Yarns in Cambridge. So um, you, I think they had them in blue or in the green, but I loved the green. So that's what I got in the green. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get on with the cross stitch. Oh, wait, I need another cup of tea. Oh yeah. <clears throat> mm. So I haven't done up a cross stitch whip thing yet. So in my whip planner that you can get if you sign up for my newsletter, um, it has um, a blank sheet as well. So you can just fill it in with anything you want. Quilting, crochet, cross stitch, whatever else you do. Um, and so I haven't done mine yet. I have not written out um, my cross stitch whips. There's too many. Um, I'm terrified to look. But I did decide that I wanted <coughs> sorry I wanted to um get back into cross stitch so um I figured that maybe on Wednesdays or Thursdays or Fridays I don't know one day of the week I was going to do some cross stitch during the day because I knit at night and typically I sew, I, I quilt in the daytime or I um, cross stitch. So I went and grabbed this one out of my whip pile. So this is one that um, I was making. I started it two years ago for Tristan, who is nearly three and a half. Well, he is three and a half. He'll be four in April. So I thought I would try to get that finished and give it to him for his birthday. I had actually done most of the cross stitch and I was at my very favorite part. Just take that needle out there, which is the back stitch. So last Friday, I had a sit and stitch with me live. Was it Friday or was it Thursday? I think it was Friday. Um, I'll leave a link if I know how to do that. I probably don't. I'll just leave a link below. And um, I just sat and pulled it out. I had to press it because it had been sat in the bag for like two years. And an actual fact, I made this up. So this is how long ago it was. I made one of these up and I'm going to redo these. So if you want one, let me know. 
It's just a PDF. I printed it on cardstock. You can get two on one sheet of paper. And I put my, when I started it, so you can see I started it in 2022. And I did every time I work on it, so I don't care about the hours like I do with the Gideon method. Just any time I put any stitches into it, I would do a circle. And last year or the year before, I was cross-stitching a lot in 2022. And I was cross-stitching certain things on certain days of the week. And obviously, Sundays was when I had worked on this project. So that's what I did in 2022. Then 2023, and you can have notes here, 2023, I just did a couple of days and that was it. I didn't, I had not touched it for 12 months. So I took it out of the bag. It was a bit creased up and um, it's just been in the basement <clears throat> in a bag and I um, pressed it. I just gave it a nice slow steam to get all the creases out and now I'm on I had done most of the cross stitch and now I'm on the back stitch <clears throat> which is my favorite favorite part I have to cough one second oh sorry about that I got a candy now so hopefully it'll stop the coughing um so yeah I just got to the back stitch which is my favorite favorite part I had outlined in back stitch the line and that's as far as it got on my live last Friday, I started on the, I actually don't even know what animal that is. So that's now where I've got to. I managed to finish, off, oh, a zebra. <laughs> I managed to finish the zebra off and got most of the way through. I just have the bottom of the tail of the monkey and then the branches that the monkeys have hanging on to and then this is the rest of it so um i really just enjoyed doing that i started the zebra in the live but like i said afterwards for the rest of that day i just finished him off in the thing i just isn't it pretty but do you not see the way those backstitch animals just stand right out compared to the others and then I'll have to just I think I have to finish a bit more of the leaves here I think yeah I have to do some more on around the toucan and then in cross stitch but then the rest all the cross stitch is done and then it'll just be finishing the back stitch and then putting the dates in I feel like this is definitely going to get finished. So I really enjoyed that. So I think, I don't know if I want to do, I'm not doing whip go this year. I have too many whips in cross stitch. And I don't think I'm going to do the Gideon method for my cross stitch. I think I am just going to work on this project when I have time. until it's finished and then I'll get another one out and finish that off that's what I'm doing there um now I did do a whip roundup of all my quilting stuff now in fairness in utter fairness to myself a lot of these so the design and ministry in fact nearly all of them other than uh no they're all they're all block of the months uh some of them are mysteries some of them i haven't started but i've got the fabric some of them uh and the fabric's cut ready to sew the block so that's kind of counted as a whip but this is how many i have so i did make my list of what I'm going to work on. So the first thing was carnival. And what this is, this is kind of a fun thing. 
I fell in love with this ages ago, a couple of years ago. I started quilting, by the way, at the pandemic, start of the pandemic. Mm. I had never quilted before. I thought it was silly that you would cut perfectly fine fabric up and then sew it back together. But now I'm loving it. <laughs> so what this is, it's from Cotton Cuts. And it's a monthly subscription. <clears throat> you can get it either in one go and pay for the whole year and you get the whole box with all the pieces in labeled month one, month two, month three. And each month they then send you by email the instructions on how to put the block together. Here's the difference and why I love Cotton Cut so much. And this puzzle mystery, that's what they're called. The pieces are sent to you pre-cut. So everything is cut for you. So you basically sit down at your sewing machine, you print off your instructions, you take all your pieces and you put them all together. When you put them together, they'll tell you, sometimes you have one block, sometimes there's two. Here is the block that I put together for number four. I think this was number four, clue four. So there's one, and I think we had to do, and we had to make two of these maybe. No, nope, we had to make two of these. So we had to make two of them with all of our little pieces and they're all cut like in triangles and you literally are just joining the triangles together. And then sometimes you're joining it to another square. There's just two triangles joined together, but they're all pre-cut and super easy to follow. Like you can get it all done in, within an hour. And then that's the whole block done for the month. Now, when you look at that, you think, what is that? It doesn't look like a regular quilt block. Because it's a puzzle piece. Hello. It's a puzzle piece. And then in month 10, you get the instructions to put the puzzle pieces, just like a jigsaw puzzle, together. They are so much fun. So there were these two. I had to make two of them and one of these. So I got that done in my 10 hours, uh, no, 12 hours, sorry, working on, um, and that is finished. So that puzzle is finished, that, that clue. So that got put away. And then, and I ticked off on here that it's done. Now, you can see that there's another one that I have to make. So when Carnival comes back up again, I just get that out and make that block. So the next one that I worked on was, um, oh, I just have to move this stuff here. Oh, it was, oh, you should see my floor, it's a complete mess. The Designer Mystery. So the Designer Mystery that I am doing is with Fat Quarter Shop. And each month they send you, um, they have all these designers in their repertoire. And each one of them designs a block for each month. And it's all using the same fabric. And the fabric is... Uh, what is the fabric? I can't even remember what the fabric name is. I don't know. Ah, I don't know. Um, but this is the block. So for block four. And I'm totally behind in this. I think they've just shipped out block seven or eight. But um, I don't care. I just do them when I do them. So this is the block. And you actually get all the fabric in the packet. So there's one of the fabric. Isn't that beautiful? There's another, there's then, and I had started to cut out the pieces because you have to cut them out. Now, the nice thing about this is they give you so much fabric. You could probably make two full blocks from each packet of fabric. So what I've been doing, because I'm very cunning, is I starch the fabric when it comes in 
and I already had leftover of this, leftover of this, and leftover of this starched. So instead of using the brand new pieces of these three pieces that came in this packet, I used the old stuff that I had from number two or number one, whatever I had left over, and I used that to cut it up. So I still have three full, I don't know if they're fat quarters or fat eights or something, but I still have four pieces of that fabric. So it's cut. But I had I didn't have any of this, so I had to starch this. And I use I think it's called Niagara spray starch. I spray it and then I just let it hang dry in the basement. And then so today I want to cut this into the pieces I need, and then I can start working on that block. Yes. So that's exciting. Okay, I've got to go back to my notes. This is gonna be a long video. You might need another cup of tea. So, oh, I think we're nearly at the end. So that was all, I haven't done any crochet this week at all, oh, well, other than her. Um, but yeah, now the shop, I loaded back all the yarn that I have dyed so far. Most of it was last year's yarn that I dyed because when I went to Nova Scotia in November for the baby coming, my baby granddaughter, Sunny. Ooh, she's so cute. And I had to look after the lovely Leo while I was down there because my youngest son, Sean, Sean, lives in Nova Scotia now with his wife, the Miss Megan. Although they are married, so I don't know why I call her Miss Megan, but I just do. Um, she, um, so while I was down there on Baby Watch, I was down there for like three weeks. So I took, I closed the shop. I just left the two patterns that I have in there for the spooky spider socks and the evergreen trees, um, which are both sock patterns. I left them in there, but I took all the yarn out. Well, now all the yarn is being loaded back in there. I took all new pictures of the yarn and so you could see it and some videos. So the shop looks a little bit nicer. And as of today, I've decided the yarn that's in the shop is going on sale. Not the patterns, just the yarn. And because we're now in 2024, I thought I would give you all 24% off. So, all my yarn from now until January the 31st, 2024 is 24% off. Yay! So, um, yeah. And so that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this rather long video. Okay, so I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea now, edit this video, and maybe this afternoon, do some sewing. Okay, I will be back for a live next Friday. Not this Friday, the Friday after. And we'll do a live, maybe we'll do a mitered square live. Girls, grab all your mitered squares and we'll sit and have a mitered square live. Okay, oh, that'll be fun. Um, yeah, so, but the next podcast will be in two weeks. So I'll see you then. Bye.